Are we alone in the universe? It's a question that has built up a lot of traction these past couple of years. And as we launch into 2014, speculations abound as to scientific and technological advances that will bring us closer to an answer. Right now, astronomers are leaning towards a very real chance that life exists elsewhere in the universe. The vaunted progress of science leaves me breathless when I contemplate the possibilities. Right now, the fastest growing field in astronomy is the study of planets outside our solar system. I had always imagined that this was the stuff of science fiction. But the venture into planet hunting is more than just idle speculation. In his newly published book, Five Billion Years of Solitude, colon, <laughs> now, how do you come up with a title like that? Uh, but there is a colon attached, The Search for Life Among the Stars. Lee Billings explains the, the seriousness of the search, the search for other habitable planets. Life on this planet has an expiration date, he writes, and for no other reason than that someday the sun will cease to shine. So, we or our successors may need somewhere to go. The Kepler spacecraft has already identified 3,500 potential planets in just a small patch of the Milky Way. And astronomers have concluded that there are roughly as many planets in the galaxy as stars. That is to say, billions. Some of them presumably must be like home. The scientific pendulum that swings on the issue of whether or not we're alone in the universe has moved dramatically these past 50 years. Half a century ago, the prevailing scientific view was that life on Earth was a freak phenomenon, the result of a sequence of chemical accidents so rare that they would be unlikely to have happened twice anywhere in the universe. The world-renowned biologist at that time, Jacques Monod, declared, man at last knows he is alone in the unfeeling immensity of the universe out of which he has emerged only by chance. But by the end of last year, a team of astronomers led by Jeffrey Marcy at UC Berkeley announced that there could be as many as 40 billion habitable planets in our galaxy, fueling the current popular speculation that the universe is teeming with life. I don't know which side I'm rooting for. <laughs> Being alone in the universe makes me feel like an existentialist. <laughs> Being part of a cosmic crowd teeming with life makes me feel deprived of any uniqueness, just one of the gang floating through the universe. <laughs> I would contemplate life differently, thinking there are other civilizations out there which have yet to be discovered. Who knows? Maybe, maybe Unitarian Universalism reigns supreme on another planet. <laughs> yeah. They got their own pope, the Unitarian Pope. <laughs> Wouldn't we want to move there? <laughs> but life on other planets remains difficult, really, to conceive, primarily because science has yet to determine the the minimal complexity of a living organism. Now, we do know that the simplest bacterium at the molecular level is staggeringly complex. 
but we have yet to discover the basic building blocks of life. We have yet to create the basic building blocks of life in any laboratory. Now, this recognition argues for the fact that life arose simply after an accumulation of millions of random chemical reactions, and we can't figure it out. And the fact that this freak chemical, let's call it circus, happened in Earth-like conditions makes it hard to imagine how life may be manifest elsewhere. Although all agree that we are the product of a cosmic accident, the question remains, are we the only planet so privileged to have experienced an accident through which life evolved? In other words, although we may be the product of a cosmic accident, we cannot conclude that we're unique. There are billions of Earth-like planets out there in terms of their relationship to revolving around a sun. Although even our sun is a very uncommon star. Our sun is referred to as a yellow dwarf star. And yet, the most common type of star in the galaxy is the red dwarf. Still, reliable scientific speculation has it that some life exists on extrasolar planets. Last June, an article in The Atlantic raised the primary question, or at least I perceive it as the fundamental question to it all, what exactly is life? Now, we may have a general sense of life as it exists here on Earth, one that involves a, a given object's ability to, to metabolize and grow, to respond to stimuli, to maintain homeostasis, to reproduce. But that textbook definition of life, life as we know it, is entirely defined by the peculiarities of Earth. It's a set of criteria determined by a planet that happens to be terrestrial, that happens to be covered in salt water, that happens to orbit a yellow dwarf star, that happens to be shielded from this yellow dwarf star by a protective ozone layer. Life as we know it is entirely contingent on its environment. Life on Earth has its roots in the chemistry of this planet. So we don't know what life outside that framework might look like or act like or smell like or something we don't even have a word for like. So astronomers today are prepared to expand their sense of what life can look like. A team at Harvard is currently engaged in trying to understand how life might have formed in other chemical contexts. That is, to understand the basics of life based on environments that are different from the environment that we know on Earth. So if I can come close to, to understanding these current scientific suppositions, I would guess that there is, in fact, a consensus about life's chemical complexities, which we haven't quite figured out, other than it came together as a fluke under Earth-like conditions. But this is not to preclude other manifestations of life on other planets that have had their own fluke accidents under different environmental conditions that have produced other forms of life we may not recognize because of our own narrow understanding of life as it appears here on Earth. Now, when I consider, and I stop and think about you know, all these chemical accidents 
that have led up to producing life as we know it. I come closer to understanding what, what the existentialists meant when they referred to life as absurd. Absurd. It's, it's only by chance that we have evolved. So how can there be a legitimate meaning and purpose when there's no actual plan? It's all by chance. And so when someone like Martin Heidegger uses the term thrownness, thrownness to describe the human condition, I concur. That's what it feels like. He says we're simply thrown into the world arbitrarily with all its attendant frustrations and sufferings and demands and duties. So no wonder we struggle to find meaning. We are thrown into the world, much like Jim Morrison sings it. Into this world we are thrown like a dog without a bone. By chance, by chance we have evolved. Wow, well, here we are. Now we gotta deal with it. And how we go about dealing with it is most curious. I mean, far be it for me to contend otherwise from those scientists who are convinced that life exists elsewhere. But clearly life on other habitable planets I don't think will resemble life as we know it. Because life elsewhere, I think, will not complete a year's journey around the sun by compiling lists of best of, worst of, yeah, this guy's <laughs> best books of the year, best plays, best restaurants, best actors, or the worst. I mean, the, the concept of best and worst are, I believe, an earthly preoccupation. 